For the last two weeks, my German fiance and I visited my family at my home, the United States of America. You're not allowed to walk with your beer around. That's freedom, I guess. We also visited during the 4th of July, the most American time there is, and we went to a rodeo. No, but it's wired. It's, that's a thing you will never see in Germany. It's the exact opposite of what you get in Germany. So buckle up, and we're going to tell you about our trip to the United States and things that you might find shocking. Lord, we fall short every day, but it's your grace that allows us to continue to walk with you through the good and bad. So we walk with you through the good tonight as we celebrate America and rule you. It was so incredibly hot while we were there. It was 40 degrees every day Celsius. We don't talk Fahrenheit here. I'm sure Laura is gonna talk about it in Celsius. Enough with that nonsense. It was 100 degrees basically the whole week. And it was doable because in my opinion of AC. Well, I always talk about how I love that we've got air conditioning in the United States. But also then some stores are just wild. But the thing that bothers me on those super hot days is then you go into the store or the Starbucks or whatever and the air conditioning is so cold in contrast to the outside. It's so extreme. It's just too cold. And so this actually got me a little bit annoyed at the air condition. I know America is the land of the extremes, but maybe we can go a little bit more moderate on the temperature adjustment. So we went to the St. Paul Rodeo. It's about a 45 minute drive southwest of Portland. It was actually the first time that I had ever been to a rodeo myself. And got it. There we go. St. Paul Rodeo, here we go. And we walked into this really cool bar, which looked so cool. Everyone was so nice. The funny thing is though, when we're going into kind of the tavern there, right at the rodeo, we had to go in separate lines based on our age, because of course you're gonna get ID'd if there is alcohol around. So funny, I have not gotten ID'd one time in Germany in eight years. When I was back in the States for two weeks, I got ID'd four times. Giddy up! We're gonna do it, we're doing it. Giddy up! I love it, it's crazy, I'm so excited. <laughs> Having lived in Germany for a long time, I am a major beer snob. We opted not to get one of these American macro beers. What they had there was Coors Light. What did you guys get? We got uh, Deschutes Hazy IPA, it's so good. And we chose that because we're beer elitist snobs because we live in Germany. However, Laura did have to try the Coors light. Tastes like a pills. It does taste like a pills, yeah. You're not allowed to walk with your beer around. The funny thing is, we're at this rodeo. It's like the pinnacle of the American West, American freedom, and we cannot drink our beers anywhere except this tiny little roped off area. Maybe if we can get those brown bags? <laughs> Maybe then? <laughs> Should we get brown bags? Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, that's freedom, I guess. So it's interesting, at the rodeo, you'll see a lot of things that you would see perhaps at a German Volksfest. You know, just some food tents, some rides. And then you'll also see some things that you won't see at a German Volksfest. <laughs> cheese with pulled chicken that was wild okay my first time ever mac and cheese and pulled chicken actually we never had it thank you so much what did you think of your mac and cheese did it, was it close to today? um <laughs> i thought that it would kind of compare to kaschbetzle the famous german dish but uh laura didn't like that comparison kaschbetzle taste mac and cheese is just yummy the next shock is the opening speech for the rodeo which is probably going to be borderline unbelievable for Germans and Europeans. But to a European, it is probably a little bit funny. <laughs> yeah, I got reborn American after that speech. We'll show you the full speech in a second. But first, so when we're all home together in the States at our house, we'd like to do family movie nights. So we all gathered and we looked at American Netflix, but we couldn't decide on anything. There wasn't a good movie that we all wanted to watch. Luckily, I was able to save our family movie night by using CyberGhost VPN to change my IP address around and use any different country's Netflix library. This gave us enough good options where you could eventually settle on a movie and have family movie night. I do the same thing when I'm in Germany and need to watch geoblock content from the States like HBO or Hulu. CyberGhost has over 9,000 servers in 90 different countries and it's 38 million users worldwide. I've made it the number one most recommended VPN on Trustpilot. Pro tip, the United Kingdom has a great Netflix library, and if you're a Formula One fan, you can watch it for free by switching your IP address to Austria and watching it on the ORF channel. 
Cyberghost also helps protect your data by keeping you private and anonymous online, protecting you from those pesky hackers and data brokers that want to get your information and sell it. Cyberghost also has a strict no logs policy, which means they don't even know what you're doing online. It works on every major platform and one account can be used on up to seven different devices so you can share it with friends and family. If you use the link in my description, you'll get a great deal on Cyberghost. 83% off, paying just over two euros a month, plus four months free, plus there's a 45 day money back guarantee, so it's totally risk free awesome service that I use every single day, multiple times a day. It's not only a great thing for you, but also helps support me in this YouTube channel. If you sign up for CyberGhost using the link in the description. So check out CyberGhost. All right, it's time for the epic opening speech full of American patriotism that hypes up the USA. to send their sons and daughters to stand against violence and oppression. It's the United States of America. <laughs> After experiencing the rodeo, I told my siblings that for a German person or probably a European person in general, going to an American rodeo is probably like some sort of psychedelic out of this world experience. America! <laughs> <laughs> So funny, we were driving on the highway and Laura freaked out that there was a house basically being pulled by a truck. Oh, we saw this this time. That was shocking. Ah, that's just wild. There comes a truck and he pulls half of a house behind you. And you were like, where's the basement? <laughs> and you'll see this very often in the States. It's kind of these one story houses that are getting pulled and they're moving an entire house to a place. That's a thing you will never see in Germany or Europe, I think, because our houses are, you know, they're in there. Speaking of houses, what was also interesting is the vast amount of very small starter homes in the USA. It's always a little surprising to see those houses because they're like, they were tiny houses. It was one room maybe, but it was a own standing alone house. And that was surprising. I like it. If you have the space in Germany, we don't have the space. Oh yeah, that's right. also wild. Hold on, what do you think? That's crazy. Yeah. Is, it, is this allowed? I guess so. I saw cars, they were not okay to drive. Like not even just a little bump inside or so. There were cars, there were the whole front thing was off. And I was like, that should not be legal to drive with that. I actually did a little bit of research on this, and vehicle inspection rules to approve what is street legal vary from state to state. Some states require only an emissions environmental check, some require a safety check, and some require no vehicle inspection at all. My brother Andy is playing college football at Oregon State. He was at University of California, Berkeley for four years. Now he's done a grad transfer and he's going to get his master's at Oregon State and play football for the next two years. So we went down to Corvallis and visited him. Here we are. Let's, go to the facilities. Let's check out. Can we go in there? Yeah, I, I, I just looked great and made sure it was okay. Hell yeah. Oh, Let's did go. you? I uh... oh, was good. You care if I come? Please. This, I think, was crazy for Laura. It really, really helps me to understand the American struggle coming here to Germany after being a college football player. The best part is that the hot and cold tub are right in the locker room. But it's just wild what they get. Yeah, there's meals in here. You grab it. Look, there's a sauna right here. We got a hot cold tub right here. Oh man. See? Pretty cool. It's better than a four five star hotel in my opinion. And they're like major stars. This is my locker. Maybe I'll play right. Isn't this cool? Yeah. This is such a great spot to watch. The terrace. Food all the time. Really, they charter jets to go to games. Incredible facilities. It's just a fantastic first rate experience being a college football player. Then you gotta think, that's such an unrealistic way to live and most of those guys don't make it to the NFL after that and you gotta go to regular life after living this just protected bougie lifestyle and that's a difficult thing for a lot of 
college football players after they finish. I want to become a college football player. <laughs> <laughs> You're hired. Set. See you run so fast. <laughs> you got a scholarship. Yes, Tommy. Do you play cornhole in Germany? No, which is weird because I think we would love that. Nice. I don't know if anybody in Germany plays cornhole, but we've got to bring this game to Germany. Cornhole is the best backyard, sunny day, chill, leisure game. I did some research and there's evidence that cornhole was actually a German invention from long ago. But as the price of corn grew, people abandoned the game. The story then goes that in the 1800s, German immigrants who settled in Cincinnati started playing cornhole again, as corn was in abundance there. So, while widely popular in the USA, it actually has German origins. I don't know if this is backed up by facts, but the whole big family thing. It's very uncommon in Germany to have big families nowadays. And, and I know for Laura that was really cool to kind of be around such a big family dynamic. <laughs> yeah, a big on you. Really not so common in Germany, and we just have a massive family, and it's just getting bigger every year. But it was a lot of fun. I got such good time with my little nephew, Tommy, and then the new nephew, the little baby, Jack. And it's so fun how entertaining a little one and a half year old can be. <laughs> nice, he figured it out, he's gotta get a higher. Good job, you did it. Who's this? The 4th of July. We've talked about it before. In Germany, it's very, very rare to ever see a German flag. Probably every single house had an American flag flying and, and some sort of 4th of July decorations to celebrate the 4th of July. And it was just the exact opposite of what you get in Germany. It was great. It was the best experience ever. Made it. 4th of July on the lake. Here we go. I don't know how other people celebrate, but I think there's nothing better than how the Fieri celebrate. We went to Uncle Bill's amazing house. Uncle Bill is the OG anyways. <laughs> Everyone came, which is amazing. Like, I got to know the other girlfriends and every brother was there and so cool having everyone around. Beautiful sunny day and we all just hang out by the lake, play in the water, chill. When the sun goes down, we'll get out on the boat. Oh, that looks cool. Easy looks like it. <laughs> and we go watch the fireworks show. Laura got to have the pinnacle of an American 4th of July experience. All right, guys, that is all for today. I want to give a shout out again to our friends at CyberGhost VPN, the sponsor of this video. Sign up for CyberGhost using the link in the description for a great deal and discount. All right, that's all for today. Thanks so much for watching my YouTube videos. I really appreciate it. Hope you have a lovely day, and I will see you next time.